In this example, we imagine a magnetic field that's constant in time. It points into the page in the region shown in green. And we look at into the page being represented by a series of X's, like the back end of an arrow. We also see in this picture a loop of wire with a resistor on it. That loop of wire acts like a little bit of circuit, except it's missing a battery. If we try to pull this loop of wire away from the region of magnetic field or out of that region of magnetic field at a certain velocity v, we may ask what will be the current established in the loop as a function of that velocity. We'll suppose that the loop of wire has a, a length l that's transverse to this motion and it's a distant, it protrudes into the region of magnetic field by a distance x. How do we solve for the current? Well, first we may solve for the voltage induced in the current loop. To do this, we use Faraday's law. But what's tricky here is that the B field is not what's changing. We're not actually changing the magnetic field, which is constant, into the page. But rather, the flux is changing because we're pulling the loop of wire out of the region of magnetic field. Flux is related to the product, or the dot product, of magnetic field times surface area. And if the area of overlap between the loop and the magnetic field is shrinking, then the area is shrinking, and so therefore flux will change. Faraday's law says that the induced voltage will be equal to the derivative, or time change, of flux. In this case, flux is just the product of magnetic field times area, because they happen to point in the same direction, so the dot product is 1. The magnetic field is, is given, it's B0, and the area of the loop actually sticking into the magnetic field is L times X. The time change of that involves only one piece, and that's because magnetic field is constant and L is constant. The part that's changing in time is X. So the voltage induced is B times L times the derivative of X. That's otherwise known as the velocity at which we're pulling the loop out. So we may write that the induced voltage is B times L times velocity, with a minus sign because of Faraday's law having a minus sign. Ohm's law says that the, the voltage in a loop should equal the current times resistance. If we've already solved for the voltage and we know the resistance, then we may solve for the current induced in the loop. I will just equal V over R. And since we, are told, we just derived that V is BL times velocity, now we have an expression for the current. It's B L times L times velocity over R. As you pull the loop out of the region magnetic field, you are reducing the magnetic flux pointing into the page through the loop. Faraday's law and that crucial minus sign predicts for us that the magnetic field that's created by the loop itself will try to oppose that change. So if you are reducing flux into the page, the induced current and therefore the induced magnetic field will try to increase flux into the page because Faraday's law says that the induced current will always try to oppose what you do. If you try to decrease flux into the page, it will increase flux into the page. This is achieved with a clockwise current in the loop. Use your right hand rule to curl your fingers around this loop of wire in a clockwise fashion. You'll then find that your thumb is required to point into the page using the right hand rule. If your current is increasing flux into the page, that's exactly undoing the loss of flux into the page. And when your thumb points into the page, remember that that represents a north pole pointing into the page. So the current should look something like this. It points clockwise. Another way to vision the same thing about opposing the motion is to imagine the forces acting on this loop of wire. If the magnetic field points into the page, like I've shown with those green X's, the induced current flowing around clockwise sets up forces on each of the sides of wire. That's because a current in a magnetic field experiences a force equal to I times L cross B. 
where L points in the direction of I. For the first segment of wire, the one that's far to the right in this picture, the force on the wire will equal I times L times the magnetic field. And we've already solved for what I is. It's B times L times velocity over R. So force number one, the force that happens to exist on the left-hand component of this wire, points back into the region of the magnetic field by the right-hand rule. Because I take my fingers, I start with them pointing up in this picture along the current. I bend them into the page because that's where magnetic field points. It's L cross B. And that leaves my thumb pointing to the left in the direction of the force. There's also a force, F2, on the upper piece of this loop of wire, the one that goes across the top, and it has magnitude I times X times B and points in the upward direction because X points to the right along the top of the wire because that's where the current points. So F2 points up. There's also a force F3 that points straight down and that's the force on the bottom of the wire. If Again, if you do your right-hand rule, start with your fingers pointing over to the left and curl them into the page, your thumb will point straight down. And that's the force F3. F2 and F3 exactly cancel one another out. So that adds no net force on the loop. And the net force on the loop from this change is F1. It points back into the region of magnetic field. In fact, it's opposing the motion that you're trying to institute. To see it another way, remember that if you would like to keep the, vo the velocity constant, then that means there's no acceleration and the sum of for all forces has to equal zero. That means that your force plus F1 has to equal zero, or your force, the one that you're pulling to the right with, has to equal minus F1 in magnitude. And we can see that the Faraday-induced current exactly opposes your action. It's trying to undo what you're doing. If we'd like to think in terms of energy or power, then the power that you're supplying is always equal to the force that you're supplying dotted into velocity. Well, we've already derived an expression for the force that you're supplying. It has to equal the opposite of F1, and that for, therefore equals b squared times l squared times velocity over r. That has to be multiplied by velocity in order to equal power. So the power you supply is the square of blv over r. Now, where does all that power go? You're putting out an awful lot of power, and you're not doing any network on the loop of wire because it's moving at constant speed. The question is, where does all that energy go? Well, if current is flowing through a loop that has a resistor in it, then the resistor is going to dissipate energy into the form of heat. We've learned before that the power dissipated in a resistor is I squared times R. We've also derived an expression for what I is. It's B L V all quantity squared over R squared. That's the square of the current in parentheses there. And if we multiply that by R, then we obtain that the power is the square of BLV quantity all divided by resistance. And notice that exactly equals the power that you are supplying. In other words, the books are balanced. The power you supply doesn't do any mechanical network on the loop, or in other words, change in energy, kinetic energy. What's happening is all that energy that you're supplying is dissipated in the form of heat in the resistor.